What we're seeing in the state of Illinois as far as the non-compliance is, is really incredible and I, I'm happy to see it. Because ultimately what you have is you have 1.2 million um, gun card holders and now there's this uh, list of products that have been deemed illegal that you have to register them um, under these new bans that are in Illinois and it's not just guns, it's a lot of gun parts magazines things like that pretty big list of stuff and as far as who's registered you know obviously they don't know who has those things but chances are if you have one of those things you have multiple of those things so i don't think it's just one item per card holder because if you have a particular firearm you're obviously going to have multiple magazines for that firearm so that's multiple items so when we look at this compliance, what we're looking at is we're, we're less than 10,000 people have, have registered their products with the state of Illinois, which means roughly you have somewhere between 0 0.01 and 1% of compliance. And you, they have till the end of the year, January 1st, they will be felons under the Illinois eyes. Uh, law legalize and they will be uh, you know non-compliant well I'm here to say that non-compliance is not enough um, you know don't be compliant I, I love that they're not being compliant but that is not enough because you know kind of like we talked about um, recently was the reason that they're also like New Jersey and now Illinois you have to register um, or I'm sorry you have to go through a background check and register your ammunition as well. So if I go into an ammo store in Illinois and I buy 5.56 five, ammo, well, they're clearly now going to know that I have some sort of rifle that fires the 5.56. Five, so, and, and there's, you know, there's a few variables there, but, but they could pretty much home in on that as, as pretty quick. And that's why non-compliance is not, in, it's not just that we don't comply and then we move forward. It is not enough. It is not enough. You know, as we go through this election year, um, there's multiple things that we can do that are non-compliant. One is, you know, pay attention to what people are saying when it comes to the Second Amendment, but more specifically what they're doing when it comes to the Second Amendment, because a lot of times we think, well, if we vote this way, they're pro-Second Amendment. We vote that way, they're not sec pro-Second Amendment. So or anti-Second Amendment. But that's not always how it works. You know, my wife's got a saying, she says, you know, I can't hear what you're saying because your actions are too loud. Meaning it doesn't really matter what you say, it's your actions that are speaking too loud. And we need to pay attention to what people are doing. So I'm gonna say, you know, a couple things that we really can apply here. Number one, don't just because somebody's part of a certain party think that they're the best candidate to protect your Second Amendment rights. Make sure that you take some time to see what that person has done in the past, how they voted. You know, more recently we had the last Congress, we had the gun ban go through the House. How did they vote? How did they vote on that? Um, pay attention to those things. Don't just vote for them because they are a certain party. Uh, pay attention to what it is they're doing. Uh, because I don't trust either party, to be quite honest. So I look at individuals. When I go to the voting booth, I vote for individual people, not for parties. But beyond that, I believe that lawsuits have to reign in New Jersey and in Illinois. Um, I do believe that you should definitely not be buying ammo in either one of those states or New York or California or, you know, but for sure not New Jersey or Illinois where they're registering all that ammo. Uh, do not participate in that. It's, it's not just about non-compliance. It's about engaging in efforts to overturn this illegal, unconstitutional action from many of our country's leaders. And it has to come to an abrupt end. And, and you know, I've said this in the past, but growing up in Missouri, I've seen the Second Amendment go extreme left, extreme right, back extreme left, back extreme right, because of how certain elections go. You know, about, it was about five years ago, we saw Virginia completely change overnight because of one election. You know, we have to be aware that this is a reality, but we can change it in the right direction for sure. Uh, we don't have to keep defending ourselves from these anti-Second Amendment elected officials. 
So uh, there you go, you know, non-compliance, it just isn't enough. More needs to happen and it needs to happen now.